So let's dive into these games. Uh, some of them we will spend longer on, some uh, not as long. But we will start off with the Saturday opener. I don't imagine that we will spend a ton of time on this because I don't know a whole lot about these teams. Uh, but 1.40 p.m. Central Time on CBS, Bankers Life Fieldhouse, Oregon State and Loyola. Oregon State a 12 seed, Loyola the 8 seed. Uh, Loyola, as of right now, you can find them at 6.5 or 7, depending on the book. And the total, around 125. Uh, look, th- this Oregon State team, I, I, can't, I can't look at numbers with them. They are playing completely differently than they did uh, for, these, for these last five games. This is a completely different team than what they were before. I don't know what happened. I've gone back to look and see, like, did somebody get healthy or did it? No, this team just gelled at the right time and they got hot. And I, I don't know what to make of it. I, I go, go ahead, go ahead. Tell me, so, tell me so, something. So I listened to I listened to Pat Forty. God, I can't tell you what show, uh, what show it was on. It was not on the Yahoo podcast. It was on a podcast where he goes on as a guest a couple of times a year, and he talked about the Pac-12 teams. And how was it a fluke? Did everybody same thing we had the conversation of is was the yeah. Big Twelve really overrated? Was the Pac twelve underrated? He he spoke about how for six months, six months out of out of the year, the Pac twelve schools couldn't go work out in a weight room. They couldn't get a basketball and dribble and work out on the, like they were on lock down lock down. All right. Out west. They were uh, what was the phrasing they were used? Shelter in place. Yes. Okay. Which which is a which is a, a a security threat statement. It's not a it's not a not a medical thing, but but that is that is get the helmet and bucker down. Okay. They did not live life like the rest of the the country, so the fact that we all thought they weren't this good is a little bit of. They weren't that good then because it was still preseason for them. They were still going through the regular season and still playing catch up to where everybody else is. But now we've reached this point and they are in full swing. And he says, if we could back up everything six months and start the season now, he said that there's no doubt we would all think the Pac-12 is far better than it when we thought originally they would be seated differently everything would be viewed from the, a different scope of lens. He believed they were just so far behind the eight ball in working out and being physically in shape. Um, I mean, I mean, their, their physical activities were anything they could do on their own, which is push up sit ups. They weren't allowed in the weight rooms. They weren't allowed in the gyms. Um, and, and so they just came into the season, not, not physically nearly in shape or, you know, haven't having been able to, to run enough drills or do anything. And, and it just took them a while for their bodies and, and as a team to get acclimated. And now, now they're hitting. And this is why you're seeing Oregon play at the top of their game. You're seeing USC play the way we never thought they were going to play. And Oregon state is, is clicking in a way in which no one expected. Um, I think that's a mark of good coaching. I do believe that. Uh, because not all the Pac-12 teams improved this much to this level, um, but but also it's just a part of of these guys, these kids. They're, they're six months behind everybody else, and so think of you know think of where Gonzaga was six months ago, and what did we think of them? You know, we I mean, if, if you just look at, we it, thought they were it, the best team in the country. Yeah, you look at Alabama, and they were gelling at the end of January, early February. Yeah. Yeah, uh, three, yeah, three and a half months is. ago, yeah, we thought differently, and so now look at these guys. They're where Bama was then. They're where everybody else was, and and I think that's why all the Pac-12 teams look just sub- substantially better um, now than than we ever expected. Yeah, they now just what does that mean? At a different time. Yeah, what what does that mean? Do I think Oregon State can beat Loyola? That's now now we're getting to a point where we're picking a game, right? Correct. I, I honestly don't. I like this Loyola team a lot. Um, there's a world where I kind of want to take the points because I think it can be close. But Loyola's got a couple of guys that I think are going to be pros, and they've they, they're just a they, they are a better coached basketball team. They they might be the best coached basketball team left in the damn tournament. By the way, agreed. You no, know, 
That's outside it, it, so of maybe Bayheim. Let's let's talk know. about uh let's talk about Porter Mosher for just a minute. Like it, okay, it, so the conversation has turned to if you're him, do you take DePaul? Do you take Marquette? Or do you take Indiana if any of those are offered? Um, or do you just stay at Loyola and build this thing into you know Gonzaga East? I I'm all over the Marquette thing. Like I think he could build a monster at Marquette. Well, and I think Pete, you know Pete like, Thamel from Yahoo is reporting. Don't sleep on Marquette. Do yeah. not sleep on Marquette. They have the second highest basketball budget in the country. I thought it was third. Maybe maybe it is second now. Pete Pete said second in his article that he wrote about either yesterday or today, um, and and it, he he says they're they're number two in the country on what they spend on basketball. That is crazy. But that that is a basketball hungry school. Man, yes. They don't have football to to blow the money on. No. So now, I. He'd have to move, and right now, remember. So we've been in, we've been to to um, Northwestern. Yeah. To get to Northwestern, you literally drive through the Loyola campus. They both sit right on the North Shore of Lake. It is some of the most beautiful land in the country. Yes. It is. It is one of the coolest, most beautiful places to hang out and to be. You're a stone's throw from Chicago but you're far enough outside of Chicago to where you're kind of in your own little bubble. And, and I, I don't know that I'm leaving there to move to Wisconsin or I'm leaving there to move to, to Indiana. I like, like those schools might be bigger and those places might be better quote unquote. But at some point in time, I got to look at where do I want to raise a family and where are my kids going to go to high school and where are we going to live? And I don't know if he's even got a family. I don't know anything about that, but I'm, but I'm just telling you, I, I would be, cautious because I think I think that job right down the road is going to come open at some point in time. Now they don't have a president they don't have an, or an athletic director. So, um, but, but I, I think he could get a phone call and literally his commute be three minutes for more than what it is now. So he doesn't have to sell his house. He agreed. doesn't have to pull his kids out of school. But look, here's the thing. Like Milwaukee's only an hour and a half from Chicago. Like you're it's not, not that commuting far. though. You can't drive back and forth. You're not leaving the North Shore of Chicago for Milwaukee. I, I mean, you're not yeah. making that commute. You can't do that as a college coach. You just can't. No, you're you're right. You have but to be but what there. I'm saying is that it's it, you're not moving to another part of the country. Like you're you're moving an hour and a half up the road. Like if if it's yeah, but an hour and a half and up the road, life is a whole lot different than on the North Shore of Chicago. That's true. And the middle of Milwaukee, not not bes. Not now, I, I would the great love, state of Wisconsin, but come on, man. I would love for him to stay at Loyola and then take the Northwestern job. I would love that. That's I think what it'd I be a great want, selfishly. Fit. There's However, some selfishness in this. But, but, but if you look at, at Porter and, and what he was doing, I mean, he was, at, he was like a season away from getting fired at Loyola. Like, he got fired at Illinois State. I think that's gone. I think that's gone now. Well, I, I agree, but it's one this, of those this, where— Even if he loses this Saturday— I think that's gone. Here, here's what he did at Loyola. He, he got the job in 2012. It took him five years after he got fired at Illinois State. He went 7-23 and 23 his first year, 15-16, and 10-22. and 22. Then he went 24-13, and 15-17, and 18-14. Uh, and, and then he made his first NCAA tournament and made it to the Final Four in 2018. 2019, they went 20-14. and 14. 2020, they, they went 21-11. Uh, and 11. And there was no guarantee that they were going to make the NCAA tournament. And then this year, 26-4, and four, and it seemingly on pace to make another Final Four, possibly. Right? They're in well, a good I mean, position. Final Four is a lot right now. We're, we're sweet 16, man. We're two, two wins away from that. Right. But, but what I'm saying, they've got a matchup where they are a seven-point favorite against Oregon State to get to the Elite Eight. And then you play either Houston, who really doesn't scare you all that much, or Syracuse. Who definitely doesn't scare you? So you've got it but set up just, pretty well. Let's just not counter chickens right now. If he agreed, if he, it goes out in the Sweet Sixteen. It was still a hell of a run. Oh, agreed, absolutely agreed. But but what I'm and saying he's is, he's not getting fired at all. He could be the coach there for the next decade. You might be right. You might be right. I don't know. I I just worried that this is somebody that's failed before. Somebody that didn't get a chance at one of those big jobs. I mean, if I was him, I would take Marquette. Um, it, it would be well, Marquette I, I, or stay a home. A lot of it is money's got to talk, okay? Oh, and I'm 100%. sure Marquette's going to come with a lot more money than Loyola. Yes. But I don't know how much a lot is. And, you know, we just 
like I said, man, I at some point in time, if you think you can win anywhere, what where you live has to matter. Now, if That's you true. can't win anywhere, then where you live doesn't matter anymore. Winning matters. I uh, I'm gonna take Loyola minus the seven. So um, I, I am too. It scares me. I don't like laying the points. Like Ethan Thompson has been on fire for the Beavers, but I, I at some point this run of theirs, this magical mystery tour that they have been on, has got to come to an end. And I but trust. You don't think we can say the same thing about Loyola? No, because Loyola has played like this all year. Yeah, that like is they true. they that, make that, it look no, okay. so easy. Right. No, you're exactly right. They they beat the hell that they didn't get a chance to play any quad one teams. Everybody they play, they beat the hell out of them. Yeah. I mean their losses, um, they lost to Wisconsin early and, early. and they lost by by fourteen points. But they lost by two to Richmond, who was a yep. pretty good team this year. Yep. They lost by five uh at Indiana State back in January after they came off of a, a little bit of a pause. And and then they lost by one in overtime at Drake. That's it. Yeah. So, at, this is the number one defensive efficiency team in the country. Their tempo is 342. Like, they play slow. They play smart. They are number nine in effective field goal percentage. They um, When they come out of a timeout, awesome. you, can, you can almost guarantee two points. Yes. yes. Like, they are that well coached. They're going to run a play. They're going to draw a play up, and they're just going to beat you at it. But, and it could be a play you know it's running. It doesn't matter. They're going to execute it to perfection. I've never seen a team with, you know, just standard athletes, all right? We're not talking about LeBron James and Dwayne Wade here, okay? We're talking about just your standard run-of-the-mill college basketball athletes. They execute to perfection. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to take the minus six and a half. That is where my book has it. Um, yeah. You uh you taking the same thing? Yeah, I'm taking the same thing. It scares me, but but the points I'm taking the same thing. I can understand it. All right, moving on, we will jump into the next game, and that would be uh four fifteen PM Central Time on CBS and Villanova is playing against Baylor. It's the number five seed against the number one seed. Uh it's at Hinkle. So obviously great atmosphere for a college basketball game. Um look, Villanova had to beat Winthrop and North Texas to get here. Uh, they're not going to be able to shoot 15 out of 30 from three uh, against Baylor. Like, that, I just I don't see that happening. Um, Baylor, like, as far as guards go, they are going to out-guard uh, yeah. a, a, a Villanova like like crazy. I mean, it's Baylor shoots 41.5% from three. They're number one in the country. Um, Villanova is number 237 in three-point efficiency defense. That is... Not a good matchup. Baylor's got three guards, Mitchell, uh, Butler, and Teague, that are going to take advantage of the fact that Colin Gillespie is out here. Against those other teams, Villanova could show out, and they could out-talent those guys. You're not going to out-talent Baylor. Like, Baylor is playing like the best team in the country right now, and I, I think that that continues here. I I trust Baylor. Uh, the odds right now, or not odds, the line right now is Baylor minus... Ooh, it has jumped up a bit. Seven and a half. I'm still going to take seven. it. And yeah, so. seven and a half. I would lay it as well. What do you think of the over at 141 and a half? So, it, a lot of people are on that over. Um, I think I'd probably go over as well. Like, I, 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 I expect too. points. I definitely don't have the balls to go under because I there's a world where Baylor just doesn't stop scoring. Yeah. I, I now, really think so. There, th- there's also a world where teams that live by the three also die by the three, and if for some reason there's just some weird ass something going on with their shot, and there's a you know a lid on the bucket, and they can't just make the ball go in the hole, then I don't know what to tell you. That we've seen that happen in tournaments before. It's why it's scary as hell to to bet against guys that shoot the three, yep. but it's also you know you know scary as hell to sometimes to bet on them because you can. You'll know in the first five, ten minutes of the game, uh, this is a loser because if they're not scoring, it's over. Yes. So, um, but I, I think I would go over as well. I like Baylor. You know, you know, I like taking dogs. I can't. We're at the point of the tournament where I think dogs have covered so much and won so much. I, I think we're we're gonna get real chalky. I thought the same thing. I, I think it's gonna get kind of chalky from here on. Um, yeah. but that does mean that we're gonna get some really, really good matchups. And I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Elite Eight, Final Four. We're going to get some really, really good games. Uh, Moving on to the nightcap. And 
this one is, uh, I guess, interesting. Maybe. I, I It's 6, what, 6, uh, 25 p.m. Central Time, TBS, Banker's Life. Uh, Oral Roberts as the 15 seed, only the second 15 seed ever to make the Sweet 16. They are facing off against Arkansas, who is the three seed here. Um, Oral Roberts, they led Arkansas by 10 at the half back in December. They ended up losing the game by 11. Uh, I was just about to say. <laughs> uh, look, O'Banner and uh, Abemus, they have been going off in this tournament. But I don't think that they have... Like, I understand that Florida has athleticism. They do not have the same players, the same no, dudes uh, Florida, that Arkansas's got. Florida's not close to as athletic as Arkansas. And same with Ohio State, right? So those yeah. two wins, while they are incredibly impressive... Very they impressive. were both by the the hair of their chinny chin chin, and I don't know that they're going to be able to. And it to was hang. Different, it was different teams. I think Arkansas might be the most athletic team left in the tournament. I I think I could agree like with just, that. Just just dudes that just raw athletic talent. This now, team's scary. There's a reason I had them going to the finals. Is and I know that's a long shot, but I just that they could also lose this game because they play so weird. Well, and and they're um, really young. Right, we've talked about yeah, that well, multiple yeah, they times. They make this mistakes. Year. Now, the young yeah. part doesn't bother me because it's college basketball. Hell, before this year, everybody's been young because every winner is just full of one and duns. Well, so what the hell does that mean? Some are full of one and duns. Like Virginia was not like to to win the tournament. Virginia, um, Nova, that they, they weren't. But every Kentucky team that's won, every North Carolina team or Duke team has a ton of one and duns. I mean, Kentucky under Calipari has only won one, but they have okay. made Final Fours. So that's, North I'm, Carolina and Duke have won a lot, yeah, and they're full of nothing but one and dones. I mean, come on. I I think there is some experience that matters here. Uh, but I, I will I will say this: the reason why we're even talking about this game is because of the spread. Like we both expect Arkansas to win this game rather handily. The ultimate equalizer is can they beat them by eleven, which is what they beat them by last time. Exactly. I don't think there's any world where Oral Roberts is up by 10 in this game that Arkansas has to come back and fight. There is a world where Arkansas beats them by 20. I I do agree with you. Um man, so you here's here's, here's 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 where I'm I'm questioning, okay? Uh Oral Roberts number 1 in three point uh sorry, free throw percentage in the country, 81.4% from the line. They're number 14 in the country in three point percentage, and if you look at Arkansas um, you know, not not great against the three at all. Uh, let's see, they are da, 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 number one fifty in three point efficiency defense. I I still think that they could they could possibly run them out of the gym. That they're not gonna. These are two different. This is talking. You're talking about styles and fights, man. Yeah, you're talking about styles and fights. Yes, Oral Roberts has shot really well against the three, and Arkansas hasn't guarded well against the three. The teams that beat them by the three are far better than Oral Roberts, that and is the true. team that Oral Roberts is dropping those threes on are not nearly as good as Arkansas. That is a that's a valid. Okay, I told you that every year we have somebody come out of the woodworks that we didn't know their name, and they're going to be a star. I think that person could be Moody. I agree. Yeah, Moses Moody for sure. Now, he hasn't been so spectacular up to this point to where everybody knows his name, but everybody in the SEC knows his name. Oh, for sure. And the two teams that they've played knows his name. I, I, I We're getting to a point as the field shrinks down, we're going to start We're going to start learning the names of stars that we didn't know. And, and I think he's going to be a household name by the time this game is over. Against Colgate, it was uh, Devontae Davis had 23 points, or sorry, uh, had 12 points. Uh, Justin Smith had 29 points against Colgate. Well, yeah, Colgate. therein lies the problem um, is, is, yeah, they've kind of shared the ball, and everybody's kind of had a different different guy take over each game. Now, you've uh, you've got that right. And then Justin Smith had 20 points against uh, Texas Tech. So, uh, But Moody had 15 points and and was an absolute stud. So, you know, I, I think I'm going to roll with you. I think Arkansas just... Too too many dudes. I don't I Just don't like dudes. laying that many points, but there is a world where I think that's the floor. If Or Roberts covers this game, it's going to be by one or two. They beat him by ten or nine. There's a world where if Arkansas covers, they double it up. Yeah, yeah, you might be right about that. You might be right. So and and back then, like when they played, how many guys it, is Or Roberts going to put on the court? That's what I need to know. How deep are they playing right now? Uh, it, like eight guys. Okay. Yeah. See, and I don't think I, that's I enough. Think by, I think by the time we get to the second half, those 
those the five starters are going to just be so gassed it won't matter. You might be right because I think Arkansas is going to Arkansas and LSU play almost identical basketball. So we have taken nothing but favorites. We're, we're changing right that here. I, well, you might. We're changing that here. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Last game on Saturday, and that would be eight fifty five p.m. Central Time tip. Late game on TBS at Hinkle. Syracuse as the 11 seed going up against number two Houston. We get a nice matchup of Jim Beheim against Kelvin Sampson. Now, this is the best coaching matchup in the tournament to this point, and maybe in the tournament overall when it's all said and done. Can you think of a more fun coaching matchup? I mean, Beheim against Huggy Bear was was fun, but <sighs> yeah, Huggy that Bear was a hell of a game. Seemed Sat on the he he couldn't get into it. He sat on the bench and he got pissed off a yeah. lot. Yeah. Now this this he will did, definitely he was not be. the huggy bear I, I I normally love. Now you're right. He he was this whole season he's been kind of out of it. But I, I wonder if that has to do with the COVID stuff and whatever else. No, I don't know that he's worried about COVID at all. Well, no, <laughs> he no, no. Like I, the I guy just that's least afraid of things. I, um, I don't I don't know that he's afraid of. It. I think he's just you know I I think this has been a hard year. I do know that his team was better than it has been in the past, but it's different. He's never had a team that was that offensively good, but they also were a lot, not nearly as good defensively as he's used to. Well, let me, let, all right, so let's talk about this. Uh, Syracuse, how have they been winning? Three ball and defense. So, let's talk about that. San Diego State, number 175, three-point efficiency defense. West Virginia, number 151, three-point efficiency defense. And this is on the season. Houston yeah. is number 12. Yeah. Houston has long dudes. They got big okay. guards. They got the long arms. They can defend. They are incredible at defending, and and we have both seen that. Like they may not so, have played the same kind of schedule that Syracuse has. No, but but they have played against zones that are very similar. No, they Tol- haven't. No, they haven't. They haven't played against anything that's similar to this. Uh, Tulsa, okay. Tulsa plays now. They did take a loss to Tulsa, but they they have at least seen it. And they came back and they whipped Tulsa the next time. And Tulsa plays a very, very similar 2-3 matchup zone to what Syracuse does. That's fine. Very Tulsa's similar. not nearly as long as Syracuse is either. Agree. Agree. So, so, let, so, so I've watched all these Syracuse games. I've watched every second of them. You know where they hit most of their threes? In transition. Yes. When they make a defensive play, they don't run down and get set up and then shoot threes. They run down and they post up and they shoot it. Pop, yes. pop. Real quick, there's no length that can stop that. Now, if they get down there and Houston doesn't turn the ball over and they can cut through the the the, the zone and they can score, then it's fine. But if Syracuse continues to get transition, they get extra takeaways, extra positions, and they score on transitions, That you, there's no defense for that. Agree. The, the best defense for that is when teams go down to dunk or to to lay it up, and you block it off the backboard. That's that's the only defense for a team breaking away in transition. All right, or you got to somehow have numbers, which you rarely ever have. You get down there and you take a charge. They're running down, and then they're stopping and just shooting, pulling the trigger, bam, quick releases, firing shots off. You can't really play defense against that. Agree. However, you can. You can stop that from happening, and the way that you do that is... By not turning the ball over? One, you don't turn the ball over. They are number 32 in the country at not allowing steals. They are number 50 uh, on offense as far as turning the ball over, which is pretty good out of 350 however many teams, right? Yes. Um, that, so, all those things are good. fine. The, here's the other part. They're not playing teams that do this. Agreed. Hold on, hold on. Here's, here's the other side of it. Offensive rebounding. If you have a team that attacks the glass when they miss a shot... Houston is number two in the country in this metric. So I I think Houston can stop all of those transition buckets. Okay. I'm I'm all over Houston on this spot. I, I think that Minus they are the points. they are a bad matchup for Syracuse. Okay. So I, I trust Syracuse, Kelvin Sampson. I'll take Buddy. I'll take the points. Totally fair. Totally fair. I, I think, think they're gonna win the game outright. I think Houston uh had a bad matchup with Ruggers. And I think they got their bad game out of the way. Uh, what I am curious about is uh, Jero. Is is he is he still dealing with the hip injury? Is he going to be you know bad or whatever? This would be a really good game, by the way, for uh, uh, for Sasser to get going from three. Like he's going to have to hit some some open jumpers. Um, 
Grimes, I'm not worried about. I think Quentin Grimes is going to be able to hit whatever he wants to. Because obviously against the a two three matchup zone, they're going to have open looks. It's just can you knock them down? And and I think they can because Syracuse is not going to run you off the three point line. Houston will have to hit open shots, and I, I trust them to be able to do that. So um, let's move on from there. I, oh, oh, so I'm taking. I didn't even talk about the line. Uh, it is currently at six and a half. Yep. I'll take Houston minus the six and a half. All right. So, and I'll, you, I'll take Syracuse plus the points. I think Syracuse can win the game plus two thirty five. So that's what I was going to say. It's a, you're going to put a little on that uh, on the money line, huh? Oh well, yeah. If you're going to bet a dog in the tournament, you need to you need to sprinkle some on the money line. May as well. May no. as well. All right. Moving into the Sunday slate, we have got the one ten p.m. Central Time tip. CBS Hinkle Creighton as the five seed against Gonzaga as the one seed. Uh, there's not a lot to say about this game. Look, it, Creighton is Gonzaga light. They play almost the exact same way, yep. but Gonzaga has uh, the better player at basically every position. Everything that Creighton likes to do, Gonzaga already does. The spread on this game is Gonzaga minus 13. I mean, it's a massive yeah, that's a number. a lot of points. Um, however, like, I, I look, I bet against Gonzaga the other day, and I thought I was going to be able to get them got with Oklahoma. And yep. and they were right there. I lost that I lost that bet by half a point. Half a, I should have bought the half point, and then I would have just pushed. But uh, but I got greedy, and I said, "Man!" Uh, and of course, Oklahoma comes out hot. They are they are stroking it like it it looked great. Everything was good. Um, Mitch Ballack, the guard for for Creighton, he is kind of the X factor if he gets going because he will he will jump that thing from mid court. And, and he can hit it, man. But the issue is he has to be on. He's incredibly streaky. Uh, that's about the only way that I feel like they can stay in this game. Zagorowski, like, I like him, but I think I think Suggs is better. Um, I just, I, I'm not going to bet against Gonzaga right now. Like, I think this is the best team, and, it, and it's not even close. Like, Baylor can do some things to maybe, uh, to slow that thing down and make it a ball game with Gonzaga. But... I, I like the Zags, man. Like I I, I think they're going to cover this. Give me give me Mark Few minus thirteen points, and and I don't I'm not even worried about it. I think they're going to cover. I gotta I don't want to do this, but I think I'm going to take Creighton in the points. It's scary as hell. It's just a lot of points. I think Gonzaga's the best team. I don't think it's close either. But thirteen points is a lot in the tournament. I think Creighton's going to play their best basketball because they have to. Because they're trying to take down a monster. Oh, most certainly. Most certainly. I it, I would have to see something different from Creighton than I have seen all season. I don't know, and, man. The last game they played, they beat the hell out of them. Yeah, but Creighton played, uh, uh, who was it? It wasn't North Texas. Who did they beat? No, it was, uh, shit. Now I'm curious. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm trying to get there. That's, I'm trying to remember. Did I say Villanova beat North Texas? Yeah, Villanova beat North Texas. Oh, it was Ohio. They uh they had yeah. to beat. Um, but hang on now, Ohio is probably like one of the better lower seed teams in this thing. Uh, agreed, but uh they had to beat UC Santa Barbara and they beat them by. One. Don't care about that. But the, the Ohio game is what I'm talking about. The Ohio man, that Ohio team is really good. Yes, no, they certainly are. But uh, I mean, Ohio was still number 81 at Kenpom. Seem like, like you think that. Well, UC Santa Barbara metrically was better than they are. I, I picked UC Santa Barbara to upset Creighton and then to beat Ohio. Like I just uh, Ohio is is still like they're good they got players but you know uh, Ohio was still like seventeen and eight this year like okay you know okay. <laughs> I mean the last game of the regular season Ohio got beat by twenty by Buffalo who who's not in this tournament so okay you know I I don't know like I I just I I don't think Creighton has played nearly the competition I think they took advantage of a weaker slate with a 12 seed and a 13 seed uh, to get to this game. So, but either way, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Gonzaga there. Um, moving on, we will, let's see, write my time down here first. 4 p.m. Central Time, CBS. This one's going to be awesome. Banker's Life, number four seed, Florida State, against number one seed, Michigan. As far as I can tell, it looks like... Uh, Looks like Isaiah Livers is not going to play again. No, I don't think. I was about to say, I don't think he's playing. There were some people talking about him trying to play. I do not think that's happening. I, even if it does, he won't be 100%. And no. I, I I don't think that this is a 
a good spot for them. Florida State's length is just a mess for for anybody, and especially for Michigan in the spot with Livers out. Um, Isaiah Livers is, is one of the bigger players on the team. Without him in there, the lineup changes drastically. They they play a little more small ball than than typically they do. Uh, and we have seen Michigan just does not look as good uh, without him. Man, against I LSU, know. like... Against LSU, they shot the lights out. Yes, certainly. And that's what I'm saying. They is shot they, the lights out. Yes, but they, they got hot for one game. Without Livers, they have lost to to multiple teams. I, their record without him is not good over the last couple of years. Like, okay. this is a senior. This is a dude that they, they kind of need. Um, you know, you, you had Brown for them that averages seven points a game that went off for 21 against LSU. Like, is that going to happen again? Eh. I don't think so against Florida State. So no, but I don't think they have to. They don't have to score nearly as much to beat Florida State. Florida State's not going to score seventy. Florida State's not scoring eighty. I I think they could. I mean, what Florida's wins in the tournament, Gary. Florida what State usually wins in the tournament. What usually wins in the tournament? What, what like usually defense? wins in the tournament? Defense, guards, guards, yeah, guards, guards. Eli I'll take Brooks. The team. Yeah. I'll take the team with much better guards. So yes, they're smaller. Florida State's length is fun. It's it's interesting. I don't think it it's this is the part of the tournament where I think Florida State always falls apart because this is the part of the tournament where they start playing teams with much, much better guard play. Totally fair. Um I, and, and that, that yeah. length goes away quickly because they can't guard the three point line, which is what this game has turned into in Michigan. Michigan can shoot the three-point ball. They don't have to be as hot as they were against LSU because Florida State's just not going to score as much as LSU scored. They're just this is not going to happen. Three-point shooting, by the way, Michigan number eleven in the country and Florida State number sixteen in the country. Um, as far as three-point defense, Michigan number one twelve, Florida State number one hundred five. So both of them basically a wash as far as three points go. Um, I'll take the team with the better guards, and I'm not worried about the length. Because, like I said, I think this is a part of the tournament where that length starts not being as important. I think when you're playing these lesser teams, the smaller teams, I think it matters a lot. When you start playing big boy teams that are used to playing big boy basketball, that length doesn't matter nearly as much. It, there is one stat that I that I do wonder about. And we're um, a super short line. You're talking two and a half points. I'll, I'll lay the two and a half. Yeah. I, I'm going to take Florida State because I think they can win this ball game. So okay. I'm I'm certainly going to do that. Uh, I do wonder about the the steals, right? Uh, Michigan, uh, they don't uh, they don't allow steals at all. Their offense nope. just does not turn it over. Uh, nope. Florida State does. However, Michigan is number three hundred thirty seven at stealing the basketball. Like they don't get steals. Which is yeah, but they don't, crazy. but they don't lose steals either. So it doesn't. Yeah. So that's a wash, also. Yeah, it's I, I just like I you're not going to take it away from that. That's what killed LSU is LSU just could not get an extra possession at the end of the game. So once they were down, it was they over. Could they couldn't catch up because they were hitting threes and they couldn't steal the ball. The to biggest get an extra possession. The biggest difference between these two is tempo. Uh, Florida State is number eighty nine. So they they yeah. kind of like to uh, to speed this slow thing up a little game. bit, yeah. But but Michigan number two forty six really yeah, slow. Like yeah, they're gonna they're gonna run a half court offense. Yeah, I'm. They're gonna that's what and that's I'll tell you this that's what they did to LSU. Yeah, they got LSU into half court offense, which LSU can't score that way. All right, they yeah. they have to score in transition. They they stopped the transitions because LSU couldn't steal the ball because Michigan doesn't turn it over very often, and and so. They just they they brought them into half court. They slowed the game down, and then when they get into their half court offense, I, LSU couldn't come close to stopping them. Yeah, and yeah. I don't. And, and now, obviously, Florida State's substantially better defensively than LSU is. I still don't think they're going to stop them. You might be right. Um, as far as average height and whatnot goes, Florida State number one uh, well, yes, in the country. Yes, they've got like four, this, or five, seven footers. Yeah, they got they got some big old boys. So. Uh, I'm curious if that will make a, a big-time difference. Um, I mean, it did for USC against Kansas, but I think Michigan has got some pros, and Kansas did not. Yeah. Yeah, this this could get interesting. Could get interesting. So I, I do think I'm, it'll be a fun matchup. It'll be a fun game. Oh, it's going to be great. Because of the matchup. Because the styles make fights, 
I, I just think we're getting to the point where I'm, I'm taking the teams where I trust the guard play. I'll tell you this. And, I, I and think, I'll tell you this. I like the coaching matchup, man. I, 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 I Michigan, Michigan just look much better than I thought in their first three games so far, well, two games so far. Phil Martelli, I, I've said this before on our show. Phil Martelli was the best hire no, any no team question. could have made. He is, as far as an assistant coach goes, especially for a first time head coach. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Phil Martelli's been around forever. Like, he's he is great at the X's and O's. Jawan Howard can get the kids in there, and he already knows a lot about, like, the NBA game and whatnot. I well, think he's a good it, teacher it's not anyway. just recruiting. I think Dwan Howard. Dwan Howard. I think great. Dwan Howard has outcoached. I mean, he definitely outcoached the shit out of Will Wade. Yes. Yes. I mean, he imposed so. his will over, over LSU and, and didn't let LSU impose their will over him. Agreed. He didn't make any mistakes. He called all the right plays. He called all the right timeouts. He, I mean, I, I think he's, I think he's out coaching a lot of these guys that have been doing it a far longer than him. I don't think he's just one of these. Well, I'm going to be the recruiter and I'm going to hire somebody else to coach situations. I think he knows what he's doing. Oh yeah, no, the game has changed big time because he was able to bring the NBA mentality and and the more efficient shots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. No, and he's, he brought he's it. Definitely yeah. changed the way Michigan played basketball. Most certainly, it's uh, it it's, it's not a far cry from what it was under Behan. I I don't know that it's a a far cry from that, but it's it it is definitely different. Um, they're still I incredibly I think, I think, efficient. I think, I think they they like, just look different to me. But maybe maybe I don't know. A lot of that a lot of that has to do with the the kind of players that they got right now. Like, true, that's right. They, it they got be some the athletes they have that they didn't used to have. Beeline didn't get those guys. Beeline had uh, the very, like, the guys that would do what he told them to do, right? That's right. And, and Juwan has he got athletes, athletes that do what yeah, he, he tells got, them to he do. He got dudes. Yep, you have got that right. And they know, and they and th- these dudes are smart. They know this game. Oh, they you, understand how this game should be played. You have got that right. You have got that right. Uh, it, it would not surprise me, either one of these teams winning. I would love to see Leonard Hamilton make it to another Elite Eight, maybe to a Final Four. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if he gets beaten. So, moving on from there, 6.15 p.m. Central Time on TBS in Hinkle, 11 seed UCLA, who has had to win three games to get here against two seed Alabama. Uh, this is stylistically a fantastic and fascinating matchup. I've, I've said that before already, but this is another one of those uh, Alabama number 11 in tempo, UCLA number 337, one of the slowest teams in the country. Alabama is 11 from the top, and UCLA is 10 from the bottom. I mean, it's yep. <laughs> you cannot get any further apart on how these teams actually play. Um, it, the question for this game, can Johnny Juzang uh, continue his hot streak? He's averaging over 22 points in this tournament. He averaged less than 15 a game throughout the season. They are a different team right now once they got into this tournament. Like, they, they had lost four straight. Now, all of those were to... Oregon State, Colorado, Oregon, USC, like all of the... All, all tournament teams. Yes. All tournament teams and all really, really good teams. As, all tournament as has teams been that won a game. Yes. Yes, you are correct. And three of those are in are, the Sweet still 16. still playing. Yeah. That's right. Only Colorado did not make it to the Sweet 16. So, yeah. You are correct about that. So, uh, you know, they had a four-game losing streak. They were all pretty close. And they get into the tournament. They get an opportunity against Michigan State. They beat Michigan State. Then they go and play BYU. They beat BYU. A good BYU team, too. Real good BYU team that a lot of people thought was going to handle that. I thought BYU was going to be in the Sweet 16. That's that's what I I know. I know a lot of people did. They Man, they just could not shoot. I guess they had open looks against UCLA, but uh, but they could not shoot for whatever reason. So, but that's the way it goes. That is the way it goes sometimes. Um, Nate Oates has never been to a Sweet 16. This is his first one. And... Although Cronin has been at this for a long, long time, uh, this is only his second one. He only did it once at Cincinnati. That was in his second season. Uh, Did not make it further than that. So a win here for either of these guys would be a first time ever. Um, The biggest thing here, UCLA, um, you know, at number 198 in three-point percentage defense, Alabama's going to get open looks. Can they knock them down again? Like That's a a big question here because – Alabama has proven 
that they can win games even without hitting the threes, it's almost impossible for the other team to be able to stop them if if Alabama's knocking them down. Uh, UCLA has been hot from three lately. Juzang and all those guys have have really kind of been lighting it up. Alabama's length might be a problem here. Alabama's number eight in the country defending the three, and they're pretty good in two-point defense as well. Um, you know, I what I'm curious about, Alabama can turn the ball over a lot. Now, they haven't. Uh, there's only been five games this entire season where they have turned it over less than 10 times a game. Four of those have come in March. Like, in the NCAA tournament, they are not turning it over. They they look like a different team as far as taking care of the basketball. Um UCLA is number 17 in offensive steal percentage. That's where a lot of Alabama's points come from. Like they they make people turn the football or turn the uh, basketball over and I you know, I everything about this tells me that Alabama uh should be able to run away with this thing, but UCLA is hot right now. And these are two incredibly different teams with the way that they want it's whoever's going to be able to impose their will. That's it. Like I don't think UCLA has played a team like Alabama other than no. Oregon this year, and no. and Oregon I think when Oregon is healthy and that's when UCLA played them, uh, Oregon and Alabama are very similar teams I think uh, as far as athletes go. So you know I it, because I'm a homer I'll take Alabama. I don't know how I feel about it. Like this is this is very much a toss up to me because Cronin's got th- those boys playing really really well. They're playing. Uh, very um, together. Their chemistry is great right now. Yeah. So. Well, I'll continue to set money on fire betting against Alabama, but I'm going to do that. <laughs> that uh, I'd rather lose money and keep my soul. I can I can understand. I can understand. I enjoyed your uh, your solo podcast the other day, by the way. Yeah. So yeah, the, I'm sure I appreciate it. It was it was good. It's all it's it all good. roses for you and all kicking the dick to me. That's all right. <laughs> the uh, what would you say? It was the slap in the penis that uh, that you did not need. <laughs> It's yeah. really good. Yeah. Really yeah. good. I was really counting on Maryland. I needed I needed Maryland to pick me up bad. And as soon as I flipped over on that game, I thought, son of a bitch. Definitely uh definitely not good, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Last game of Sunday evening. That would be seven seed Oregon against six seed USC. 845 p.m. Central Time on TBS. It's at Bankers Life. This is the Pac-12 bout, right? USC beat Oregon 72-58 on February 22nd. Uh, Oregon, however, is healthy now. Definitely a good thing. We showed what they're capable of. I don't believe that they are going to be able to do the same thing against USC that they did against Iowa. I mean, they scored 95 points in that game. It was like 1.5 points per possession. Just absurd. Pretty insane. Absolutely absurd. Uh, this defense that USC is going to bring is just a just a smidge better than Iowa. Uh, just a little bit. Um, a, t- USC a, has the number five adjusted defensive efficiency in the country. Yeah. Uh, Iowa was number seventy five. Yeah, they're pretty big they're pretty difference. Good. Big they're difference. Pretty good. Uh, nobody has paid attention to this at all. USC is up to number six in the country at Ken Palm. Like, yeah, they. They have the dudes. The Mosley brothers are just uh, nobody. I wouldn't want to play them. There's, there, listen, Gonzaga's pretty damn glad that USC's not in, you know, not in their bracket. Well, but, they uh, but they are. But they don't have to play them right now. You know no, what no, I'm no. saying? They, like, they would just have to play them in the next, next game. If they get through Creighton. But, yeah, like, this is one of those situations where there's not a team that wants to play USC. I don't think. I think I they're the think scariest either. team left in the bracket. Uh, I do agree with that. I mean, because they have Because of got... the way they stop you on defense and – Here's just here's on, the deal. Just on offense, they're they're just. I feel like either one of the Mosleys can score every possession. Yeah, the Evan Mobley and Isaiah Mobley are unreal. Now Evan Mobley is like he's the guy, right? Well, yeah, no, he's he's he, substantially better than Isaiah. But Isaiah is coming into his own, man. This last couple of games, that oh dude yeah, is, no, he's he's, he's been great. He's definitely not shy. No, it's it, against Kansas for sure. I mean, he. Like that was a ridiculous game. Yes. Like the yeah. the step back threes and all that. Like that's just something else. At, at no point in time, it looked like they were toying with Kansas because they were. Yes. They no, were toying with them. Um, it, they have got one dude that really plays that's under six seven. USC does. I mean, it's it's absurd the length that they've got. It's just yeah, they're long and they're crazy athletic though. Yes. They're not just long and just gonna sit down at the paint. They can guard. There's a reason they're number five in the country at defense. Wait, they're going to you know, guard the perimeter, 
better than anybody else in the tournament. What what is defense? Hey, on it on its face, what is defense? It's effort. Well, yo, yeah, like it's, it's, yeah, and you, yes. you have got 100%. dudes that play for USC that give a crap and actually want to defend. But Oregon's got kind of the same thing, right? Now, now Oregon's they, got athletes. Oh, Oregon yeah. overall, from top to bottom, Oregon's more athletic than USC. But yeah. I, this matchup's gonna be fun. I think, and I hate this is what I bothered by by this thing. I hate that they changed this from Friday Saturday to Saturday Sunday. So now you got a bunch of folks that are gonna. Gonna, this game's going to be late. Half the country's not going to watch it. They're going to be dragging ass into work the next day. But if it was on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock, everybody would be watching it. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Instead, it'd, it'd everybody would be watching. a huge number. They'll be watching Syracuse and Houston instead. Um, but, it, you know, I, I still think there's going to be a lot of people watching this game. You know, it's 9 p.m. Central Time. I think it's going to be fine. Um, here is the – so, there's a lot of length of difference here. Yeah. USC, we just talked about, you know, yep. a lot of 6'7", 6'9", 6'9", 6'10", 7' foot, whatever. Uh, Oregon is is long, but in a different way, right? It's 6'6", 6'6", 6'6", 6'6", 6'5", 6'2", 6'8". Like, that's it. That's it. Like, <laughs> that's their dudes. So, they got guards that are, that are long, but they don't really have anybody down low that can bang with Mobley. So, I think the I think the biggest thing here is going to be uh, experience. Uh, Oregon has a bunch of seniors on this team. Uh, USC, like I think the X factor here is Taj Edie. If if Edie can get going and he can start hitting some threes and he can really space the floor, I I think that's I mean this will be a runaway for USC. I, this line is only two. Yeah, it's one and a half at at Bet Online. Let's see, one and a half. Yeah, that's the only book that has it one and a half. At Bovada, Bookmaker, Heritage, Intertops, UH, everything else is two. Um, but I, I think I'm going to roll with USC. Yeah, I am. Like, too. I, I just, I mean, I, it's too short of a line. I think they're the better team. The, do you think that yes, they're the Oregon's better team? Oregon's got a lot of guards. Team. I don't know that Oregon's guards are better than USC, though. Like, that's the thing. I think, I think USC's going to defend the perimeter better than anybody else left in the tournament. Here, here's what I'm scared of. I'm scared of USC being so young, because they, they got a ton of young dudes. Sure. And the coaching match. So it, you're, you're talking about seniors against freshmen, okay. and you're talking about Dana Altman against Andy Enfield. Who do I trust more? Do I trust Dana Altman with a bunch of seniors, or do I trust Andy Enfield with a bunch of freshmen? I know who has the more the more talent, and I know who the bigger guys are. And I, I mean, in my my head is telling me that you have to take USC here. I need I need so norm. You know how much I like coaches, right? Yeah. And if there's a transcendent player on the other side, and the great coach team doesn't have like that real transcendent player to match up with them, I that's hard. At some point in time. Coaching matters, but the dudes on the floor matter more. That's a that's a good point. I, yeah. If we're if we were if we were old school basketball, you know, drafting teams, picking teams on the on the uh, uh, on the playground, I, I think you're taking two USC guys before you take the first Oregon guy, and there's a chance you're taking three of the top four from USC. Yeah, I mean the the top three guys for Oregon are all seniors, but I I do think, I mean Isaiah Mobley's a sophomore, um, Evan Mobley's a freshman, Tajidi's a senior. Yeah, so he's good. a senior, and, and he's the guy that really runs the defense too. Yeah, you know? I mean he he's the guy that kind of gets those guys. You know he's he's going to be the one to bring the effort and and, and make sure everybody's carrying their weight. I. I just I just think three out of the top four guys are gonna all if you if we're just drafting players who you want to take, I think you're taking three USU guys to one to one Oregon guy. At some point in time, that's gonna outrun coaches. It just is. Yeah. Yeah. But it's my opinion. We've seen the the other team win. I mean, we just talked about a million different ways. If if Oregon gets hot and Oregon's just shoot USC can't defend, you know. Just step back threes over and over and over again. I just don't think they're going to be able to run. The only way Oregon's winning this game is if they hit threes, because I, 
And USC guards the three-point line really well. But I don't think they're getting into half-court offense. And I don't think they're running efficient half-court offenses against USC. I see. Defense had- doesn't usually fold in the tournament. If you're really good at defense, it's why defense usually wins tournaments. Because if you're really good at defense, sometimes you can hit, sh- hit shots, sometimes you don't. But rarely does your defense not show up. No, that that is true. That is it's the uh, most consistent true. thing in March. Um, it, it, speaking of that three point defense, uh, USC number one sixty in three point defense. Oregon is number fifteen in the country in three point percentage. So, oh wow. So yeah, we're gonna. So that's Oregon's. But, that, that's that is thing. Oregon's way to stay in this game and win it. Yeah, because they they can space the floor. They can get you know the yeah. Mobley brothers out from the paint and make them have to defend. And does that open up the paint a little bit? Yeah. Uh, maybe. You know, I. I don't think it's going to open the paint. I think they're just going to hit threes. Yeah, they, they will have to hit them. They will certainly have to hit them. Uh, you know, it'll I'm gonna, be a fantastic game. I will tell you that. I do. I don't see this being a runaway either side. I don't see USC running Oregon out of the gym. I don't see. I don't, I don't just don't think this game's going to get double digits on you either way. I'm gonna. I might be wrong on that. I'm gonna take. You know, what? I'm swapping. I'm. I'm you gonna take Oregon. Oregon. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna take Oregon. I rarely do. I go up against the the team that I think is worst coach, but I'm going to take USC. I think you've got two stars that are really good. No, that, that makes perfect Obviously sense. Obviously, one one is transcendent, and the guy that we could be when this whole thing is over with, holding the trophy, saying, how did have we missed this guy? This is the best tournament. In, this is the best player in the country. And we, you know, we're just now realizing it. No, you're, you're right. I mean, I think that guy shows up all the time, and, and there's a really good chance that it could be him. And that, you, you, may, you may have a valid point there. You may have a valid point. All right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.